How are you, Mr. Pitov? I'm great. Thank you. Well, um, I have to say, I, this is really new for the Macedonian community to see two guys here on the stage talking about a few things that, uh, and the reason why, uh, makes you such an exceptional individual uh, in Canada, but also for the Macedonian community worldwide. I was uh, starting to wonder who you were talking about out there. Uh, I guess first and foremost, I'd like to say thank you to His Grace for attending here with the Reverend Fathers. And um, Ken Shaw, this is a real honor having you here one of Canada's most outstanding news reporters on TV. <laughs> Dr. Karen and your wife and the ambassadors and uh, Mr. Jason, the Honorable Mr. Jason, and many, many brothers and sisters of mine who I consider brothers and sisters sitting amongst you all out there tonight. This award really belongs to my wife and to my children who, was, who have always thought first and foremost of their father. And I thank them very much and I receive it on their behalf and I'm honored to do so. Thank you, Mr. Ritov. I'd like to start off uh, with a question. Uh, born and raised in Canada of Macedonian heritage, how, do you, how did you get your passion for Macedonia? Tell us about it. I... <clears throat> First and foremost, my love and respect is for this beautiful country of Canada. Canada has given my family and everyone who has come to this country everything that one would want in life and the opportunities. But I grew up with a father and mother who had a real passion for Macedonia, who always told me why they had to leave Macedonia. And even though they never wanted to leave Macedonia, they had no other alternative but to look for a better life somewhere else. My dad always told me about the miseries of life in Macedonia, of the miseries from the Greeks, the miseries from the Serbs, the miseries from the Bulgarians, and the miseries from the Turks. And after listening to Dad and discussing the situation with him and Mother continuously all the time, they motivated me to the point where I felt I really had to do something for Macedonia. And so I've always wanted to try to give something and to help and assist my people's people from Macedonia. Can you share some, perhaps, uh, some situations, experiences during your childhood that uh, made you get involved with the Macedonian cause? I guess some instances, some examples in the Canadian community. I, 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 sorry, I, I didn't get that. Uh, I guess uh, some examples, perhaps, uh, have you seen any discrimination of Macedonians in Canada, or have you uh, witnessed any protests, or any childhood experience that resonated, I guess, to get you involved in the Macedonian cause, in addition to your parents' love um, and heritage? Well, I guess, Probably one thing that pro probably bothered me more than anything else when I was very young. Um, my dad told me a story about an uncle of mine, my mother's brother, 
that in 1919, which was nine years before I was born, the Greeks held a protest meeting at Masonic Temple on Davenport and Young, invited the Canadian and that existed in the world. And my mother's brother, uh, who was a leader of the Macedonian community in those days, jumped up on the stage and says, here is a free, breathtaking Macedonian. They are lying to you. There is Macedonians, and there will always be Macedonians. Thank you, Mr. Vitov. So you got involved with Macedonia from a young age, but let's uh, sort of jump ahead. It's 1991. Macedonia gets its independence. How did you feel? What did you do, and why? Well, as soon as I heard that that was, that was so, and they were declaring independence, I phoned a few of my friends in Macedonia and congratulated them and asked if there was in any way that I could get involved in assisting them. Within a matter of a day or two, President Gligorov called me and asked me if I would come over there. I asked Professor Andy Rosas and Tom Dimov to join me in going to Macedonia to scope the two. Actually, we, we met in Oak Creek to meet in Oak Creek and discuss and see what we could do. I realized that really they needed help. So I offered to help, of which was accepted. I came back to Canada. I immediately got on the phone and phoned some friends of mine. We hired, at the time, we hired the former chief of staff of Ronald Reagan, the former chief of staff of George Bush. We hired the public relation firm of the, uh, the Kennedy family. We hired the former chief of staff of Brian Mulroney. We hired a couple of uh, ambassadors to the United States, one from Canada and one from England, and some others, and we put a pretty strong team together. I then arranged for all of us to fly to Macedonia, to Skopje, to meet with Mr. Gligorov and some of the members of cabinet, of which at that point in time, they discussed a plan and assisted in every way possible to open doors to assist the Macedonian government. So it was a desire, it was an ambition, it was something I wanted to do, and we did it. What about some of the challenges, I guess, that you faced in the beginning getting involved? I mean, we saw the debate before, but can you tell us a little bit more about those? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Some of the challenges that you faced in the beginning when you got involved, I mean, we saw the debate before between you and that professor from the Greek community. Tell us more. Oh, I received all kinds of threats. And, uh, I've never lived with threats. Um, I live in a country that uh, has good police forces. Luckily. 